Today we will discuss the second part which covers nature and process of creative thinking, barriers to creative thinking and strategies to enhance creative thinking. Let's first start with nature and process of creative thinking. It is important to remember that creative thinking is not always expressed in extraordinary work. One does not have to be a scientist or an artist to be a creative thinker. Everyone has the potential to be creative. Creative thinking can be applied in almost any area of human activity at different levels. It could be reflected in activities like writing, teaching, cooking, enacting roles, storytelling, conversation, dialogues, asking questions, playing games, trying to solve day-to-day -day problems, organizing activities, helping others resolve conflicts and so on. This concept of everyday creativity which is reflected in one's way of perceiving thinking and problem solving is different from the special talent creativity seen in outstanding creative achievements. But what is creative thinking? Creative thinking is distinguished from other types of thinking by the fact that it involves the production of novel and original ideas or solution to problems. Sometimes creative thinking is understood just as a new way of thinking or thinking differently. However, it is important to know that besides novelty, originality is also an important characteristic of creative thinking. Every year, new models of household appliances, tape recorders, cars, scooters and television sets are produced which may not be original unless unique features are added to these products. Creative thinking thus refers to originality and uniqueness of ideas or solutions that did not previously exist. Creative thinking is also generally characterized by what Bruner calls effective surprise. If the product or idea is unusual, the response of most who experience it is one of the instant surprise or of being startled. Another important criteria that characterizes creative thinking is its appropriateness in a particular context. Simply thinking of being different without any purpose, doing things in one's own ways, being non-conformist, indulging in fantasy without any purpose or coming out with a bizarre idea is at times mistaken for creative thinking. Researchers tend to agree that thinking is said to be creative when it is reality-oriented, appropriate, constructive and socially desirable. There are two types of thinking which is given by J.P. Guilford. He was a pioneer in creativity research who proposed two types of thinking which is convergent and divergent thinking. Convergent thinking refers to thinking that is required to solve problems which have only one correct answer. It is thinking in which a person applies his or her knowledge and the rules of logic. For example, variety of tests such as multiple choice test, standardized test, quizzes, spelling tests require convergent thinking because only one answer can be 100% correct. Now, you try to think of certain questions for which there is no one right answer but many answers. A few such questions are given below. What are the various uses of cloth? What improvements will you suggest in a chair so that it becomes more comfortable and aesthetically pleasing? What will happen if examinations are abolished in schools? Answer to the above questions require divergent thinking, which is an open-ended thinking where the individual can think of different answers to the questions or problems in terms of his or her experiences. Such kind of thinking helps in producing 
novel and original ideas. Divergent thinking abilities generally include fluency, flexibility, originality and elaboration. Fluency is the ability to produce many ideas for a given task or a problem. The more ideas a person produces, the higher his fluency ability. For example, more the number of uses of a paper cup, more would be the fluency. The next characteristic of divergent thinking is flexibility. Flexibility indicates variety in thinking. It may be thinking of different uses of an object or different interpretation of a picture story or different ways of solving a problem. In case of uses of a paper cup, for example, one may give an idea to use it as a container or to draw a circle. The next key characteristic of divergent thinking is originality. Originality is the ability to produce ideas that are rare or unusual by seeing new relationships, combining old ideas with the new ones, looking at things from different perspectives. Research has also shown that fluency and flexibility are the necessary conditions for originality. The more unvaried idea one produces, the greater the likelihood of the original ideas. And the last key characteristic of divergent thinking is elaboration. Elaboration is the ability that enables a person to go into details and work out implications of new ideas. Divergent thinking abilities facilitate generation of a variety of ideas which may not seem to be related. For example, what are the common ideas for enhancing food production? The likely answers could be related to quality of seeds, fertilizers, irrigation and so on. If someone thinks of cultivation in a desert for extracting protein from weeds, it would be a remote idea. The association here is between food production and desert or weeds. Ordinarily, we do not associate these together. But if we let our mind free to seek new and remote associations, a number of combination of ideas may arise out of which one or two may turn out to be original. You must remember that both convergent and divergent thinking are important for creative thinking. Creative thinking is essential and where divergent thinking is essential in generating a wide range of ideas, convergent thinking is important to identify the most useful or appropriate idea. So we have discussed two types of thinking, divergent thinking and convergent thinking. But what is the process of creative thinking? Let's start and discuss the concept and process of creative thinking. The starting point in creative process is the need to think or bring about something new which initiates the effort. Not everyone experiences this need as one can be happy and contented in carrying out routine work. The need for search of new ideas and solution arises from sensing problems and gaps in information. The process of creative thinking begins with the preparation stage that requires one to understand the task or problem in hand, analyze the problem and become aware of the background facts and related information. The process evokes curiosity and excitement to think more and more in different directions. The person tries to look at the task or problem from different angles and viewpoint. Here, divergent thinking abilities discussed earlier play their role to help one extend in new directions. So the first process and the first step in the process was preparation stage. Coming back to the process, when the person is trying to generate alternative ideas, and trying to view the problem or task from an unusual perspective, there may be a feeling of getting stuck. One may even get disgusted with failure and may leave the problem or the task for some time. This is the stage of incubation. 
research shows that creative ideas may not occur immediately during incubation when the individual is not consciously thinking about the problem but seeking relaxation from conscious effort. They may occur or strike when a person is doing something else. For example, going to sleep, waking up, taking a bath or just walking along. The next process or the next step in the process is followed by stage of incubation is the stage of illumination. The aha experience or I have found it experience. The moment we normally associate with the emergence of creative ideas. There usually is a feeling of excitement, even satisfaction of having found a creative idea. Last is the stage of verification, when the worth or appropriateness of ideas or solutions are tested and judged. Here convergent thinking plays its role in selecting the appropriate idea or solution that works. So there are four stages in the process. Preparation incubation, illumination and verification. The next step is developing creative thinking. The first step in developing creative thinking is to identify inhibiting or barriers that hinder creative expression and then make conscious attempts to overcome the same. As we are discussing, you may analyze how we approach our task and problems. There are blocks to creative thinking which can be categorized as habitual, perceptual, motivational, emotional and cultural. Although much habitual learning is necessary for smooth and efficient functioning within the daily routine, the tendency to be overpowered by habits, particularly in one's way of thinking, can be detrimental to creative expression. We become so used to thinking and perceiving things in a familiar way that it becomes difficult to think in new ways. It may be related to our tendency to quickly jump to conclusions, not to see problems from fresh perspectives, be satisfied with the routine patterns of doing things or resist to overcome the preconceived viewpoints and not to change the immediate judgment. The next barrier is motivational and the emotional blocks which also interferes with the creative thinking which show that creative thinking is not merely a cognitive process. Lack of motivation, fear of failure, fear of being different, fear of ridicule or rejection, poor self-concept and negativism may hamper creative thinking. For example, some people may not be motivated enough to extend themselves and make extra efforts. A person may find that he or she cannot do it further. They may leave the problem in between or may accept the immediate idea as the final idea. Further, some people for example have negative assumptions about themselves. They feel that they are not capable of doing some task. You may be surprised to know that Thomas Alva Edison, the inventor of the bulb, took years of experimentation with hundreds of failures before he produced the first bulb. The next barrier is the cultural barrier. Cultural barriers are related to excessive adherence to traditions, expectations, conformity, pressures and stereotypes. Conformity to some extent is essential for social existence but excessive conformity to traditions, rituals and procedures are likely to block creative thinking. Cultural blocks arise due to the fear of being different, the tendency to maintain status quo, preservation of personal security, social pressure, over-dependence on others and so on. So we have discussed the barriers to creative thinking. Now let's discuss what are the strategies for creative thinking? Research on characteristics of creative people has revealed that there are certain attitudes, dispositions and skills which facilitate creative thinking. And we will discuss some strategies which will help you all to enhance 
your creative thinking abilities and skills. So the first strategy is become more aware and sensitive to be able to notice and respond to feelings, sights, sounds, textures around you. Spot problems, missing information, irregularities, deficiencies and what not. Try to notice contradictions and incompleteness in situations that others may not do. For this, cultivate the habit of wider reading, exposure to a variety of information and develop the art of asking questions, pondering over the mysteries of situations and objects. The next strategy is generate as many ideas, responses, solutions or suggestions on a given task or situation to increase your flow of thoughts. Try to look for multiple angles of a task and situation to increase flexibility in your thinking. It could be for example, thinking of alternative arrangements of furniture in a room to generate more space. It could be different ways of conversing with people or it could be looking for cost and benefits of a course of study or career or it could be looking for ways of dealing with an angry friend and what not. The next strategy is Osborne's brainstorming technique which can be used to increase fluency and flexibility of ideas to open-ended situations. Brainstorming is based on the principle that producing ideas should be kept separate from the evaluation of their worth. The basic assumption is to let the minds think freely and the tendency to put judgment on the worth of ideas which may be postponed. That is, imagination should be given priority over judgment till all the ideas are exhausted. This helps in increasing the fluency of ideas and piling up the alternatives. Brainstorming can be practiced by playing brainstorming games with family members and friends keeping its principles in mind. Use of checklists and questions often provide a new twist for ideas like what other changes? What else? In how many ways could it be done? What could be the other uses of this object? And so on. The next strategy is originality. Originality can be developed by practicing fluency, flexibility, habit of associative thinking, exploring linkages and fusing distinct or remote ideas. A creative thinker, it is said, may not evolve new ideas but involves new combination of ideas. It is a chain of thoughts and cross-fertilization of ideas that may bring out something new. The idea of the rocking chair has come from the combination of chair and the seesaw. Practice making unusual and unexpected associations using analogies. Sometimes finding original ideas or solutions require a dramatic shift of focus which can be facilitated by asking oneself, what is the opposite of the commonplace? A usual solution to the problem. Allow conflicting thoughts to coexist. Looking for solutions opposite to the obvious may lead to original solutions. The next strategy is engage yourself more frequently in activities which require use of imagination and original thinking rather than routine work according to your interest and hobbies. It may be decorating the house, improvising or redesigning of old objects, making use of waste products in multiple ways, completing incomplete ideas in unique ways, giving new twists to stories or poems, developing riddles, puzzles, solving mysteries and so on. The next strategy is never accept the first idea or solution. Many ideas die because we reject them thinking that the idea might be a silly idea. You have to first generate a number of possible ideas or solutions and then select the best among them. The next possible strategy is getting a feedback on the solutions you decide on others 
who are less personally involved in the task. Try to think of what solution someone else may offer for your problems. The next strategy is give your ideas the chance to incubate. Allowing time for incubation between production of ideas and the stage of evaluation of ideas may bring in the aha experience. Sometimes ideas cluster like branches of a tree. It is useful to diagram your thinking so that you can follow each possible branch to its completion. The next strategy is resist the temptation for immediate reward and success and cope with the frustration and failure. Encourage self-evaluation. The other possible strategy is develop independent thinking in making judgments, figuring out things without any help or resources. The next strategy is visualize the causes and consequences and think ahead, predicting things that have never happened. Like suppose the time starts moving backwards. What would happen if we had no zero? The second last strategy is be aware of your own defenses concerning the problem. When we feel threatened by a problem, we are less likely to think of creative ideas. Last but not the least, be self-confident and positive. Never undermine your creative potential. Experience the joy of your creation. So today, we have completed nature and process of creative thinking, barriers to creative thinking and strategies to enhance creative thinking. I hope you all have understood the concept really well. Thank you.